Hi everybody, let's continue our study of oligopoly by looking at how game theory can fit in. Make sure that you've already seen my Kingdom Manco video first before watching this video. And we could see from that video how we could use Kingdom Man Curve to understand the behavior of oligopolistic firms. But one of the biggest limitations of Kingdom Man Curve is that it doesn't map interdependence to the same detail as game theory does. And therefore, game theory can give us more nuanced and detailed conclusions than Kingdom Man. Let's understand how. We could argue that an oligopolistic market is like a prisoner's dilemma game here. And if we apply the prisoner's dilemma game to oligopoly, we'll get to a situation like this. So we can see here, we have two firms, firm A and firm B, and each firm is facing the same pricing decisions, whether to charge a high price of one pound or whether to charge a low price of 90 pence. And what I've done is I've put in their payoffs, their profits, depending on the options that they pick into the table here. Important for you guys to remember that the left-hand number is always the payoff or the profit for the firm on the left, in this case, firm A, whereas the right-hand number is always the payoff or the profit for the firm at the top, in this case, firm B here. That's very important to remember. So let's say that these are profits per month, depending on the pricing strategies that each firm takes. So we take this first cell here, we can see that firm A and firm B are both charging the high price of one pound, in which case firm A is gonna make three million pounds, right? So the number on the left is the profit for the firm on the left. So firm A is gonna make three million pounds, and firm B is gonna make three million pounds. The right-hand number is the profit or the payoff for the firm at the top. So that's the basic idea of how to interpret these numbers. Okay, what we need to be able to do is to solve this game. You have to be able to do that. Think of this as a diagram, but this diagram needs to be solved. How do we do that? How do we know what each firm should do? Well, this is interdependence, right? That's why game theory is brilliant. What should each firm do? It depends on the actions of the other firm. So what should firm A do? Depends on what firm B does. If firm B decides to charge one pound, it means that these two cells are open, right? These two cells, if firm B goes for a pound. What should firm A do? Well, they've got two options. They can either charge one pound as well and earn three million pounds, or they could undercut firm B and charge 90 pence and earn four million pounds. The rational outcome clearly is to undercut and charge four million pounds in which case we underline that rational outcome by underlining the profit that firm A will make. What if firm B goes for 90p and they charge the low price? Well, that means that these two cells are open, in which case firm A could charge the high price of one pound and earn 0.5 million pounds, or they could follow and charge the low price and earn one million pounds. Naturally, one million pounds is a greater profit. That's the rational pricing strategy, so we can underline the one million pounds there. What about firm B? What should firm B do? Depends on what firm A does. If firm A charges one pound, is it clear that these two cells are now open? So firm B could react by charging the same price and earning three million pounds, or they could undercut and earn four million pounds. And naturally they're gonna undercut and go for the four million. What about if firm A chooses 90p? Well, firm B, knowing that these two cells are open now, these two here, could charge a higher price and earn 0.5 million pounds, or they could match and charge the low price of 90 and earn 1 million pounds. And actually, they're going to charge 1 million pounds as well. Brilliant. We've solved the game. We know we've solved the game when we get to a cell with two underlying numbers. The cell with two underlying numbers is known as the Nash equilibrium. It's an equilibrium, a rational equilibrium, that can last in the long term. And in this case, it's clear to see that the two underlying numbers are in the cell where both firms are charging the low price. Going deeper, we don't just have a Nash equilibrium, we can clearly see that there is a dominant strategy here for both firms to always charge 90p regardless of what the other firm is doing. So 90p is a dominant strategy, and if both firms charge it, we get to a Nash equilibrium. And that leads us to our very first conclusion from game theory, and that is that if 90p, 90p is the Nash equilibrium, pricing strategies that can last in the long term, then it makes no sense for that outcome to change. There is gonna be price rigidity at 90p. And therefore, if firms are gonna compete, they're gonna compete on non-price factors, such as on branding, on advertising, on quality of product, or on quality of service. That's an outcome that we also learned from our previous video when we looked at King Demand Curve. Great, so game theory also takes us to price rigidity. Fantastic, looking at the Nash equilibrium. But what's brilliant about the prisoner's dilemma model, and especially applying it to oligopoly here, is that we can see that the Nash equilibrium is not the best outcome for both firms combined. In this case, both firms are making one million pound each, 
but it's very clear to see from this table that an outcome of one pound being charged by both firms is going to give each firm a higher profit. It's going to give three million pounds profit to each firm as opposed to one million pound. But we've just learned by solving this table that as soon as one firm tries to charge one pound, they're in danger because the other firm is going to undercut and earn much higher profit, whereas you, the firm that goes for the higher price, is going to earn very little profit, 0.5 million. So rationally, it makes no sense to get there. But hey, if firms could break this interdependence and collude together, there is a way in which one pound can be charged by both firms, and therefore both firms can be making lovely, juicy, super normal profits, right? Absolutely, there is a very strong temptation to collude and to get to outcomes which joint are in the best interests of the firm. Three million pounds worth of profit each. Oh yes, we can't ignore how, temp how tempting that is to do, to collude together. In this case, to form a cartel, to agree to fix prices at one pound each and earn these lovely super normal profits. So yeah, the table, the payoff matrix here shows us that conclusion very clearly, doesn't it? But it also shows us conclusion number three very clearly as well. And that is that even if there is a collusive agreement, even if these two firms come together and they make an agreement to fix prices at one pound because they want to make these lovely profits, the other firm always has that incentive to cheat on the collusive agreement, right? And to undercut and go for the four million, even though that doesn't make much rational sense. Because in the long term, all that's going to happen is both firms are going to end up back here. There is still that overriding threat and temptation for a firm to undercut the rival, to break the collusive agreement and to try and go for that four million pounds. So absolutely, we can't deny that that incentive is very strong and therefore collusion may not last in the long term. Superb evaluation for you. But also there is concern that competition authorities might be kind of clued into what's going on here. And if a firm ever gets scared that they're going to be caught and ratted out by competition authorities, then they might go and cheat for that reason too. But we can see the incentive to cheat and try and make higher profits is very clear from this uh, payoff matrix as well. Um, so that's a nice evaluation to let you know that collusion may not last in the long run as a result. So the prisoner's dilemma game applied to oligopoly can lead us to three very interesting conclusions, all because of interdependence. Because of interdependence we get here, but the temptation to break it, and then whether it will last in the long run. Superb. But that tells you that oligopoly can go in many different directions. Understanding the behavior of oligopolists is not necessarily the most simple thing in the world. And therefore, you must stay tuned for the next video when we summarize everything we've learned from King Demand, everything we've learned from Game Theory, and we try and look at how oligopolists actually behave. Where could they go and what are the significant uh, analyses of how they go? We need to look at that in more detail and that's exactly what the next video will do. You must stay tuned for that as we summarize oligopoly behavior. But hopefully now you get game theory, really interesting stuff. Thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you all in the next crucial video. Thank mm -hmm. you.